Hey guys, what's up? It's Sydney, and welcome back to my channel and to my series, Missing Since the 1910s. As per usual, if you want to go ahead and give me a follow, you can do so on Instagram, at Sydney's Poisonous. And if you want to follow my jewelry shop, where I sell cute little pieces like this, um, you can follow that at Perfect Poison Shop, and my YouTube is at Sydney's Poisonous YouTube. So go ahead and give those a follow, and let's get into the video. So this week we are going to be talking about the disappearance of F. Lewis Clark. Francis Lewis Clark was born June 21st, 1861 in Bangor, Maine. Bangor? I really hope I'm saying that right. So Francis was actually born into money and he was very well educated. He actually got to attend Harvard, which is my dream school. So if I got to go there, I'd be like the tattooed version of Legally Blonde. After studying at Harvard, he was actually fortunate enough to go abroad and study in Europe as well. And that is actually where he started sailing across the world in competitions and that he really had a love for it. He was also considered to be an athlete of some sorts because he did actually sail in competitions all over the world. Um, in my opinion, a sailor is not an athlete, but... Clark then settled in Spokane Falls, Washington, and he was actually a very determined, influential businessman, and he was an investor. So he invested in a whole bunch of different places including a giant flour mill, mining, banking, and he owned a bunch of different real estate as well. And actually Clark was responsible for most of the historical buildings um, construction that you see in the historical district of Spokane. So like I said, he financed most of the construction in the historical district and he was responsible also for the construction of the American Legion building. And actually Louis Davenport, who uh, is, as you know, is responsible for the Davenport hotels, actually bought land from Clark and that is where the Davenport Hotel sits today. So like I said, Clark was a very influential, very rich businessman in the area. So he had two homes. The first was on Spokane South Hill and the second was on Hayden Lake. Sometimes Clark and his wife would go to Southern California to avoid the cold weather because Clark did actually grow ill in the early 1900s and his condition actually worsened the longer time went on so they would do that often and they would just stay in hotels so yeah Clark basically struggled with his health all the way up until his disappearance the disappearance of Francis Lewis Clark January 17th 1914 Clark and his wife were in Santa Barbara at the time and his wife was taking a trip so he drove his wife with the chauffeur to the train station and because of Clark's failing health, he was actually not attending this trip. So he basically kissed his wife goodbye and told his chauffeur that he would meet him in the morning, that he was going to be taking the mile walk home or back to the hotel at the time. So that was the last time that Clark had ever been seen alive. The night of his disappearance seemed to be an average evening. Um, he seemed to be in high spirits when he said that he was going to take the walk back to the hotel to his chauffeur. So his chauffeur really didn't bat an eye at it. And that was that. So the next morning when the chauffeur showed up to pick him up, he was not there and there was no sign of his things that he had on him the day previous. So the chauffeur was actually very concerned about Clark's well-being and he contacted the police. The chauffeur informed police on Clark's failing health and that he was not sure if he was able to make the mile trek back to the hotel on foot. So he was actually very concerned about him at that time. So the search for Clark began and the only piece of evidence that they found was his hat. It was found on the beach, I believe under one of the wharfs between the train station and his hotel. So likely he might have dropped it or something. And unfortunately, that is where the evidence kind of ends there. They could not find any other piece of his belongings. They could not find any remains. They could not find any sign of struggle or anything of that sort. So it's just incredibly frustrating um, that there's no other information to go on 
and there's no other leads really that the police have because all they could find was his hat. So now we're going to get into the theories of what happened to Francis Lewis Clark. The first theory, and this is um, basically what the police ruled it as, was a suicide. So they believe that Francis Lewis Clark actually basically plunged himself into the sea, which kind of makes sense in a way because he was very fond of the sea. So I feel like if you were going to kill yourself and you're, you know, you love the ocean, that's a pretty good way to go. You want to, you know, go out with like something that you love around you, I guess. So that would make sense to me in a way. And the fact that they could only find the hat, that was kind of odd. But yeah, so like I said, uh, due to the lack of evidence and witnesses, they did rule his death a suicide. And the second theory is that he was actually held for ransom. Due to him being a millionaire, this is a very good theory to go on as well. Money is always a strong motive. People will always do something to get a buck, so it's very, very likely. Capitalists being held for ransom was actually the headline of the LA Examiner two weeks after his disappearance. They assumed this due to the anonymous letter that they actually received. And I'm gonna actually read this verbatim so I don't fuck it up because it is a quote, so I don't wanna fuck it up. We are holding Millionaire Clark for ransom. He is well taken care of, the blackmailers. And the blackmailers actually wanted $75 in ransom. This was put in with the letter. And $75 in 1914 with inflation would be about $1,885 at the time. The police, however, were not convinced of this and they believed that it was actually a hoax. So they asked for proof of Clark's well-being, if he was um, alive and well, and they did not get any response to this, so they, again, played it off as a hoax and continued with their ruling. Okay, so I'm only mentioning this now because I want to kind of stick to a timeline here. They actually found a body late February on the shore where Clark had supposedly gone missing. They flew out Clark's friends and his wife and anybody he knew basically to identify the body as Clark's. But they all came back with a negative ID as far as it being Clark. They said they did not know who it was. And that is kind of where the case went cold as far as new leads go because everybody but the police was actually convinced that he was kidnapped or that he was murdered or something had happened to him. So the case kind of went cold until June 1914. And this is the third theory and that he was killed slash disposed of. So a woman, Margaret Kelly, or Margaret Kelly, because she had a lot of aliases apparently, was actually arrested for being part of a blackmailing slash fake medium ring. But it kind of makes sense a little bit because they were all extortionists. So if they were pretending to be mediums, then that would be to try to get money from someone who's trying to contact their loved one that have passed away, I guess. And actually leading this ring was a private detective by the name of Edgar Byron. So the ring eventually got shut down. Kelly actually stated that Clark was one of the victims of the extortion and the ring itself. So this was actually put into evidence, I guess. Found a lot of holes in Kelly's story and inconsistencies as well, as far as her changing her story and whatever. So it was actually ruled to be a fabricated story and the police didn't buy a word of what she said. But of course it still made headline news as it would because Clark was a millionaire in this area. There's actually a very long detailed confession from her. There's actually two, but like I said, her stories were very inconsistent, so it's said to be fabricated and I actually believe that is fabricated as well because I did read both accounts and to be honest with you, I feel like it's so fabricated that it's not even worth mentioning it, but she said she wanted to go and tell her story because she had a guilty conscience and she wanted to get it off her chest, but she said that the police didn't believe her and that they thought that she was crazy or she even said, I hope that I'm not goofy and she said that they're basically just going to believe what they're going to believe 
and I don't know, I mean, her story was very inconsistent, but as far as, like, this being, like, a very well-known thing that they were extorting millionaires and billionaires and whatever for money and, like, attacking people when they knew they would carry cash on them, but there's no evidence with this. There's no other person coming forward and saying that this actually happened. So it's very hard to take Margaret Kelly's word for it, especially when she went by like four different names. So it's kind of hard to take her word for anything. And then of course there's always the crazy theories that I love reading about because they're just hilarious. It is possible, but I don't necessarily agree with this theory. But on some comment boards, a lot of people have mentioned aliens as far as like the theory goes because there's no evidence. All they could find was the hat and whatever but they were he was right next to an ocean like what evidence are you gonna find he was right next to the ocean there's sand and stuff there's not like things that he could grab onto or and like leave his fingerprints and whatever so obviously i'm dismissing this theory altogether i do believe in aliens i just don't think that that happened in this case but yeah so that's gonna be the theories um my theory is that he killed himself um i do believe that because he was actually struggling very much with his illness and he didn't you know he was basically dying anyway so i think that maybe he did kill himself and pick the ocean because that was his favorite place and favorite thing to be around so maybe that is what happened but in my opinion, I actually agree with the police on this one. I think that he did just commit suicide because there was no actual money collected. There was no further ransom. And if he was murdered, they never found a body. So it's like, what? There's no evidence whatsoever. There's no physical evidence. And like, and back then also, there was, it was basically the start of when fingerprinting was being like introduced because fingerprinting started in 1892 I believe and that is kind of like when it was first getting introduced so even if they could find like a print on the hat or something fabric is very hard to get a, a print from it has to be more of like a flat surface something that's going to keep the imprint so it would be difficult anyway especially considering what his hat fabric was made of. I'm sure back then it was not like the hats that we have now. This case is going to remain cold, um, ruled as a suicide, but technically a cold case. So let me know what you guys think happened down below. I would love, love to hear your theories on it and see if we can maybe figure out a new piece of information that I maybe missed. So yeah, I mean, I'm pretty good at doing my research, but sometimes I miss shit. So if you know anything about this case please let us know down in the comments down below and definitely leave a theory for me to read please because i am just too interested in this shit thank you guys so much for watching and stay tuned for continuous missing persons cases as well as a bunch of other series that i'm going to be starting soon i'm actually in the works of creating four series and i've been writing my little ass off my hand hurts really bad, so stay tuned for that, and I will see you guys next Wednesday.